Today, I'm gonna be teaching my friend Austin how to trade stocks. Yes, sir. Never traded in my life. Hopefully this goes good. <laughs> Swipe up to submit. There we go, we're in. We're oh in, God, all right. Nervous. <laughs> we'll see what happens. At the end of the video, we'll see whether you made money or lost money, so stick till the end for that. So you have some money in there, yeah. right? $284 from just bought like a random crypto coin like a year ago. So <laughs> so you haven't traded it yeah, at all. Never, I've never traded in my life. All right. Boom. All right, there we go. $1,014. Yeah, 1014 That's what we got to work with. <laughs> so what most people do is they open up a Robinhood account and they throw in like 500, 1,000 bucks and they choose a random stock and they'll buy calls or puts. So today we're gonna to be talking about options, how to trade options and swing trading specifically because that's what I do. You being someone who doesn't know how to trade, having no experience, knowing you know what a call is, you know, you're betting on the price to go up, yeah, yeah, put, yeah. you're betting on the price to go down. I know the simple terms, I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> so let's make an example of what not to do, what most people will do. And then at the end of the video, we'll check in and see how All right, let's do it, let's do it. All so, right, so where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? Just go to the search. Search. What are we buying? I don't know. It's up to you. Up to me? It's up to you. I like Tesla. Let's go with Tesla. Tesla. Okay. All right. $181. So 30, Tesla 31 is cents. down on the day 3%. Oh, geez. So are you going to bet on it to go down or up? I feel like it's got to go back up eventually, right? I, I, don't, know, I don't know how this stuff works. <laughs> so we're going to close this at the end of the day. So there's going to be a day okay. trade. So okay. just keep that in mind. Hit trade. Got it, trade. And you go to trade options. Trade options. Now you can see you've got your expiration dates on the top. Mm -hmm. So you can choose an expiration date. Now this is gonna be when the contracts expire, okay? So if you're taking a day trade, you'll typically you know, choose a contract that's gonna expire within a week or two. Whereas if you're swing trading, you're gonna choose contracts that expire within a month or two. Gotcha. And we'll talk about exactly why, but just choose an expiration date and then you're gonna have to choose a strike price. Okay, so so I have to choose April fourteenth, right? Is that the, I don't know. The, I can't tell you anything. Is that the quickest I can? Like, do I even that's have the, to click that? That's the closest expiration date. Okay, so I so guess I'll click that. Inherently, I'll tell you that is the most risky. And then okay. you've got the contract, so you can buy a call or buy a put. So you said you want to bet on it to go up. Yeah, I want to bet on it to go up. Okay. You so choose. what's the difference between the top half and the bottom half? Okay. Like share price. So the only good thing about Robinhood is that it's very visual. So when you're buying a call or a put, you're yeah. buying either an in the money or out of the money contract. So an in the money contract for a call is anything below where the price of the stock is currently trading. So say Tesla right now is trading at $181.40. So anything below, okay, so the $180 call, 1775, yeah. 175, those are going to be in the money. They have okay. intrinsically more value because what you're saying is I am betting on Tesla to be at or above 100, say $180 by the 14th of April. Yeah, and that's what I want to do. You don't want to go out of the money? Okay, so so out of the money is like saying I'm betting on Tesla to be at, say, $182.50 by April 14th. But Tesla is below that right now. So there's extrinsically, there's extrinsic value, there's less value in those contracts, but they could be worth more if you're right. Okay, so if a call is betting on it going up, then how could you call in the money if all of these are going down in price? There's a really common misconception when people hop into options, they think that you're actually holding the contract through expiration. All you're doing is, you know, as traders, we're trying to react to the market, not predict the market. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a, a call or a put, you can sell that a minute later. And so think of it like this, options are leveraged 100 to one, right? So yeah. say the $180 call, which is in the money because it's below where the current price is trading of the, of the stock, right? Tesla in this case, $394. And it's $394 because again, it's leveraged 100 to one. So it okay. looks like it's $3.95, but that's $395. Oh, okay, okay. So I wanna do like one of the ones that say like $1 or like 64 cents, so I don't. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm just totally gonna, up I'm to just you. Gonna try. Okay, so. So just choose something. We're gonna hop on my computer and I'm gonna teach you the right way to trade options. Okay, I'm just gonna send the $258 one. Like, I know it's half the account, but. So you can choose how many contracts you want. Oh, uh, let's just do three. Let's just put the whole account, the whole on, account on it. Okay. $780. I'm, I'm really feeling this one low key. All right. I actually am. <laughs> so, so review. Review. Swipe up to submit. 
There we go. We're in. We're oh in. God, All right. Nervous. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Okay. So we have three contracts, $774 of the total cost. So that's, that's literally most three, of your three account. Three fourths of my account. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's improper position sizing. So like generally the rule of thumb is 5% per position size. Mm -hmm. That essentially puts you in a place where mathematically it's almost impossible to blow up your account. If you size in 5% on each position. Okay. So that was a bad idea then. Yeah, but don't worry. We're going to teach you the right way to All trade. Right. We'll, All right. We'll see what happens. Let's hop on inside my computer. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to start going over, well, how to actually trade. All right. So you took that last trade based off of intuition, right? Like you yeah. just, that was a gamble. Complete guess. Complete guess. So Complete now guess. we're going to hopefully educate you on like how to actually take a trade. Okay. How so to actually figure out whether it's going to go up or this down. This is what I've been wanting to learn. Good. Yeah, so wanting to learn. I swing trade. I do all my work on the four hour time frame. Yeah. Now it's important to realize like different time frames are gonna be reflected on your trading style. So if you're day trading, you're gonna be looking at a one minute time frame. That's pretty typical for day trading. If you're scalping, you know, some people scalp on like even second time frames. My swing period or my hold period uh, typically is three to five days. So I'm gonna be entering a position, say between three to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll either sell that position the next morning or I'll end up holding it between three to five days. Okay. So I'm swinging okay. these, I'm swinging these positions, I'm swinging these trades overnight. Okay. So it's it's a whole different style than than day trading, and that's why I use a four hour because it kind of slows down the time, and you look at the bigger picture of the chart. So I'm looking at the bigger picture here. So does that make it like a safer trade overall than day trading, or it's not that day trading is safer than swing trading or vice versa. It's that the style and the strategy I use. So kind of to describe how I trade, I'm a trend trader. And what I do is I look at the larger trend and within the trend, I try to identify a pattern. And then I use a series of moving averages. Okay, I use the 180 day SMA. That's that green line right here. The 50 day SMA and the 15 day EMA. Gotcha. And based off those moving averages, I trade about five to six different setups. Now those are setups I will see on the chart. So say I am just scrolling through charts, looking at the S&P 500. I'm gonna go through maybe two, 300 charts. Then I'm gonna take into consideration the trend, the pattern, looking at the moving averages, and then trying to see if there's a setup on the actual chart. Gotcha, and these like squiggly lines are the moving, <laughs> that moving averages, so, correct? These are the moving averages. Okay. And so the cleaner and the clearer the chart, yeah. I can find the better. Okay. So when I can identify levels easier, um, then I'm able to set my targets. So where I'm going to be stopping out of the trade, where I'm going to be taking profit, and hopefully we'll make a couple more videos diving deeper uh, into my strategy. Uh, but again, just going over the basics here, I'll pull up like the S&P 500 and I want you to just identify the trend. So the trend is either going to be bullish or bearish. Okay. And so playing direction of trend is in my opinion, easier than trying to play like a reversal of the direction. Like typically I will try to play direction. I'm trying to play the trend. Okay. So I'm looking for charts where first I'm trying to identify where there's a clear trend. In some charts, there's not a clear trend. The choppier the chart, right? Where I like to say the moving averages aren't respected um, because moving averages, they'll be either acting as a support or resistance level. So if the candles are trading above this green line, the 180 day SMA, that means that level, the 180 day is going to be acting as support. And if the candles are trading below, then, you know, this 180 day is going to be acting as resistance. Okay. So when the candles are trading like straight through it, not respecting it, then there's no information we could take, you know, based so on So this is that. a bad chart. So it's a bad chart. Okay, got it. With, yeah, you know, the criteria look I look at. Okay. So start going through these charts. That's step one is uh -huh. you start going through charts and, you know, wherever it is, the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000, S&P 500, trying to identify the trend and looking for a cleaner and clearer chart. Okay, so this one looks like, eh, it's like hard to tell. I'd say it's bullish, kind of. I don't know. I don't know. But let's look okay. At okay, so this one's obviously bearish. Bearish. Okay, so yeah, so it's straight line down, up, down, up, down, but it is following like a pattern of High, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, but keeps going lower, correct? Yep. So let me give you an idea here. So look at the moving averages. Again, those aren't respected. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see, you know, we, you know, candles were trading below this level, the 180 day SMA, kind of choppy back and forth. It's clear they're not respected. Like the, yeah. the more clear it is that the moving averages are respected. And again, the cleaner and clearer the chart, you're able to identify these levels 
whether support or resistance to go about basing your trade off of. So if there's very clear support on a chart, whether that is based on a candlestick or a moving average, and there's very clear resistance, then you can actually set those targets when you go to structure your trade, if there's, if there's a setup. So one of the setups I traded last year, one of my highest expectancy setups was on a bearish chart, okay? Overall trend, it's a downtrend. Moving average is respected, okay? Typically, I'd like to see candles trading below the 180-day SMA um, throughout the duration of the chart, although sometimes we can look at the more immediate trend. And then seeing that we just formed a new low, so, you know, on this chart, CPT at 97.74, yeah. Considering the trend, the pattern of lower highs essentially was invalidated right here because you can see that high at 147.72. We started trading, trading down, lower highs, lower highs, and then we and broke. Then got messed up. We yeah. broke that. So that trend was invalidated, although the overall trend on the bigger picture here is still bearish because we did just form a new low. So one of the trades I took last year, one of my setups, um, was playing the move back down to that low because, again, taking into consideration the pattern that has been formed. And I don't like using like preconceived candlestick patterns like bear flags or bull traps or I'm sure you've heard of some of those terms. I think so. I think I've heard some pretty weird terms. <laughs> and those are kind of like coin tosses in my opinion. They're 50-50s. Whereas if you're looking at an actual pattern, you know, it's a, it's historical data that is playing over and over. It's, it's repetition that, you know, the more times you see that, that kind of builds up the certainty factor yeah. behind the fact that more than likely the chart is going to continue developing that same pattern okay yeah i understand so i could look to play just a move down to that low at 97.74 again taking everything into consideration but this chart again is not going to present that opportunity because we did see an invalidation of those lower highs and so then the rally so let's keep right, looking let's keep looking this one does not look very choppy right it's not look good so you'll see like this one looks even worse you'll, yeah you'll see you see you understand yeah, you're getting yeah. faster at it like you'll see within a couple of seconds okay this one looks pretty good there's a good one yeah so because it's everything's above the 180 day so so the 180 day is acting as a support line yeah good gotcha. and so by knowing that what could we do or what's the trade we could take based off this chart we can do a call based off this chart and why because it is going bullish and it has not traded underneath the 180 day line. Yeah, the trend is bullish. The 180 day SMA has been like validated yeah. as that support level. And again, the more tested that 180 day, validating that as support builds up the certainty factor. So you can see one of the other setups that I trade. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, depending on the market conditions, you'll see, you know, some setups more than others. Two years ago, when the market was rallying, right, we'd see, you know, a week or two of just straight green. You'd see a lot of charts that looked very similar to this. And so what I do was I would play a move or a pullback to that 180 day SMA and then it bounce off that level into a new high because you can see we're making higher highs. Okay? So that's pretty much what we're waiting for in this chart. Yes. So you can look at the margin for profit. So that is going to be how much distance on the chart from where it's currently trading to that target. So say on this chart, we enter right now, mm -hmm. we can go about calculating the margin for profit by just dragging this tool up and we can see there is about a 5% margin to the upside to that target. Okay, that high at $200. And so I'm looking for between three to 5% as a margin for profit. And then the downside on this trade, if we were to enter now, would be the 180 day, day SMA. It would be a break below that level. Yeah. So again, the cleaner and the clearer chart, you're able to set those levels. So if we lost the 180 day of support, I would be stopped out if I entered this trade now. And that sits about four, four and a half percent below. Whereas the upside where I'm looking to take profit is as we break that high on the four hour. Gotcha. And then you can go about figuring out your risk to reward okay based off your strike rate calculating your risk to reward and that stuff will go into so a question later. when you set this trade as a call mm -hmm. uh do you have like a stop loss and is that where you put it like to where the so my if it goes under four percent it takes your money out or so i don't set the stop loss when i enter mm -hmm. i will set alerts on the chart so it'll just ping my phone so and, then and then i'll okay. and then i'll and then i'll stop out gotcha. so i would go about setting a stop loss slightly below the 180 day SMA. Mm -hmm. And I do that because you'll see the market likes to probe these levels to shake buyers out. So think about everyone looking at this chart right now, everyone who can see the same moving average, everyone's thinking, all right, I'm gonna stop out 
when this thing hits the 180 day SMA. Yeah. But you want to give it a little leeway because you'll see candles will, you know, probe that moving average and then retrace. People get shaken out and then the thing ends up, you know, recovering. So giving it a little margin to the downside. So this would be a great chart, you know, that we could take a trade on based off that setup, you know, sure. taking into consideration all these different factors. So I have a checklist that I'll go through. And if I can't check off one box on my checklist, based off this criteria that I'm looking at, then I'm not gonna take the trade. If there's fewer opportunities, maybe one is looking all right, don't just take trade. Never take, take the trade. risk. Yeah, why would you yeah. put on a trade if you can't, you know, check off all the boxes, if you're exactly. not certain on it? Yeah, no, that makes sense. The sure. more certainty you can have behind the position, the better. So far, what have you learned? So based off of everything that you just told me in this session, I honestly think that I could place a trade on my own, but not too educated of a trade because I know there's also like thousands of things that I have to learn beyond what you told me in this 30 minute time frame. True. But just based off what you told me of following the 180 day line, I can make an educated guess on which direction that the chart would be going in into the future. So. So not just taking a trade based off intuition like your Tesla trade, not just guessing. Okay. Yeah, now now that what you told me about the charts, I have a good feeling that we lost money on the Tesla <laughs> trade, which I'm very upset about, but I guess we don't know until we look. It's been like, I think like 30, 45 minutes. So let's, let's see. jump into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go it. see. Time to see how much okay, money. I haven't flipped the phone around. <laughs> I don't know where we're at, but last time I checked, we were at a thousand and I think $14. Yeah. Where I placed that trade, so. Oh, 984. No! It's okay though. We only lost a few dollars. It's okay, not, that's it's not, not bad. It's not that bad, yeah. Down 4%. So, down $40. Let's go back and you show me which position I should have placed and which type of call or which type of put I should have chosen in the next episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, I do want to show you the correct option contracts that you should have taken. If in the first place, this was a good trade to oh, take. It's actually so, fluctuating a lot. So realize that the the in the first place, there actually has to be a trade to take on the chart. And then based off your strike rate, you're able to figure out whether that is a trade you can take with risk reward criteria, which I wanna cover in the next session we do. Um, but when it comes to options, just know that the further out the expiration date, the less volatile those will be. So mm -hmm. they'll be safer. Okay, so you chose a really close expiration date. They're gonna be more volatile contracts. They're gonna be riskier, but you did take a day trade, right? So if you're day trading or swing trading, you're gonna be choosing different contracts, right? Whole yeah. different style, whole different strategy. Mm -hmm. And then the further in the money, the safer, the less volatile the contracts are. The further out of the money, the riskier, the more vol volatile the contracts are. It's not that the contracts you chose were bad. Oh my God, you're back in the green. Can I take it out? Can I take it out? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily that they were bad because I haven't fully looked at them and analyzed them. Yeah. And that's something that I'll do is I will throw the contracts in an analyze tool and I'm able to calculate the percentages that they will be up or down based off of the levels that I've chosen on the mm -hmm. chart. But based off the expiration on the contracts that you took, is a risky we trade. know those are riskier, right? Yeah. But in the first place, you didn't know anything about trading. Now, hopefully you do know a bit more, right? Mm -hmm. Back me up here. <laughs> I, I do know a lot more. Like okay. I came into this knowing absolutely nothing. Didn't know what a 180 day line is, 50 day line. No. SMA. None of that, whatever it is, <laughs> none of that, but. Do you feel a little more confident as a trader? Yeah, I feel like now I actually have the ability to, if not place my own trades, but I can copy your trades on what you do on your course and your live trading. So I'd be able to definitely make some money. So <laughs> that's Sweet. good. It only took me 30 minutes, so this is moving a lot. This is moving, yeah, a, this lot. Is moving a lot. So those are some very volatile contracts. So I know it was can... a two day trade, but am I able to take out whenever I want? Yeah, so with options, just because the expiration date's in two days or two months, you can still close the trade. Where do I go to close the trade? Okay, so on the app. go down here, let me see. You're gonna go click on Tesla, mm. trade, sell, and then how many contracts you There's want, three. so three, and mm -hmm. then Robinhood, it's really tough to get filled. You get really bad fill prices. But what the, is the fill price? The fill price right now, all right, if you're just getting filled at the ask, you're gonna be at, well, the bid, so we'll talk about the bid and the ask and what that means mm -hmm. in you know in another session. Episode, yeah. So stay tuned. <laughs> but let's see, 253, 255, these are moving a lot. So just hit review and we'll send those through. Should I put something into this box? You don't have to. Unless right, you're I'll trying to it. like potentially hold this trade a little longer to try to get filled for a better price. All right, price. so 
Does that mean we just sold it? There we yep, go. Yep, you're out. All right, so that's not awful. That's not awful. For knowing absolutely nothing, just taking a guess. Honestly, I think I got lucky that I have some of my money still. <laughs> well, not some, pretty much all of the money still. So I'm glad. Uh, can't wait to place this trade again and do it the right way. I like and it. And be profitable, so. We definitely have a lot more to go over, a lot more to cover, but I think, you know, from a beginner's standpoint, hopefully this helped everyone watching. Hopefully they felt like they were learning alongside yourself. Yeah. But I definitely need to teach you some more. Yeah, so you don't lose I need to learn money. some more. So <laughs> we're going to make it part two soon. Uh, I guess we'll just see what happens. Yeah. And yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys are interested in learning about trading and copying my exact <laughs> trades, we'll put the first link in the description. So thanks for coming on, Austin. Awesome. Yeah, I guess. You.